The hacking of the 2016 elections by the Russians came as something of a surprise to many politicians, voters, and the tech industry itself, which was clearly behind and lacking in its initial response. But now tech giants, senators, and political campaigns are all sounding the alarm about the way foreign actors and governments are spreading lies and information again. And as Amna Nawaz tells us, some of these efforts are aimed at the midterm elections this year, less than three months from now. It's the focus of this week's segment about the leading edge of technology. There have been a series of findings on this front in just the past 48 hours. The very latest, the Democratic National Committee has reportedly asked the FBI to investigate an attempt to hack its voter database. Let's break all of this down now, starting with our own Nick Schifrin. So, Nick, the DNC hack, what do we know? The database had tens of millions of people in it, that the hack or attempted hack was by an unknown third party and that it was unsuccessful. But the DNC used the attempted hack to point out that it wanted more help, more security help from the Trump administration. And that goes to two points. One, the DNC and others have criticized the administration for not providing enough security ahead of the midterm elections. And two, that the hacking and intelligence operations, some of which we saw in 2016, have not stopped and are ongoing. And often when we talk about them, we talk about them in relation to Russian efforts. But last night, Facebook announced they shut down hundreds of fake accounts, these originating from Iran. What do we know about those? Right, so it's two. One, some from Iran and some from Russia. And the ones from Russia were the same actors we saw in 2016 connected to Russian military intelligence. And they were trying to influence operations in Syria and Ukraine, two countries that Russia has intervened militarily. But the big ones, you're right, were Iran. 652 pages, groups, and accounts posing as news and civil society organizations that were actually fronts for Iranian hackers, uh, Iranian groups, and Iranian state media. And like in 2000, what was the goal? The goal was to sow discord and to influence people's opinions toward what Iran wants them to feel. And it was at not only the U.S., but people in the Middle East, the U.K., and Latin America. Uh, and there are a few examples that uh, I should highlight. A group calling itself the Progressive Front posted a fake photo of Michelle Obama with the sign, an immigrant took my job, an apparent reference to Melania Trump. A group calling itself Bernie Kratz, connecting Bernie Sanders to policy on Gaza, and a fake movie poster, Nukebook, instead of Notebook, showing North Korean leader Kim Jong-un embracing President Trump. The suggestion there, apparently, while President Trump was willing to talk about North Korean nuclear weapons, he pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. And what the cybersecurity experts I talked to said today is that bad actors, in this case Iran, learn from other bad actors. So these are attempts that mimic the successful attempts that Russia had in 2016. And Facebook says, look, we're trying our best. We're improving security. But on a call last night, they said, this is like finding needles in a haystack. And CEO Mark Zuckerberg said, we are trying to improve security every day. Security is not something that you ever fully solve. Our adversaries are sophisticated and well-funded, and we have to constantly keep improving to stay ahead. But the shift we've made from reactive to proactive detection is a big change. And it's going to make Facebook safer for everyone over time. So Facebook is obviously struggling with this. Our own government is struggling with this. What do we know about that? What are we doing as a country, not just to stop the behavior, but defend against the attempts to? So there's some defense, right? The, the Trump administration says it is trying to improve election security. But there's also offense, especially when it comes to Russia. Trump administration has imposed nearly 500 sanctions on Russian people uh, and Russian entities. Yesterday, there were new sanctions. And in total, experts say that, look, yes, this is having some effect, but the sanctions aren't strong enough to cripple the, the, the Russian economy, uh, and so therefore the Russian economy will muddle along. And so far, there's no disunity around Vladimir Putin. And so therefore, these sanctions are not changing Russian behavior, and therefore the Russian influence operations will continue. Nick Schifrin, good to talk. Thank you.